Hey everybody, Rich here from HFX Gaming Memories, and welcome back to another episode of Cocktails and Game Pairing. It's starting to get nice, and that beach weather's coming, so I thought no better time to make a fishbowl and pair it with a video game. Now, there's a dozen ways to do fishbowls. I'm just going to do the one that I made a lot last year and show you some different ways you can add alcohol, decrease the alcohol, or even make it alcohol-free if you want to sell it to children or you're just not into drinking. First off, we need to pick our glass. Well, there's so many sizes of fish bowls. You can go with your standard looking fish bowl. This is actually plastic, so it's nice to have around the pool so you don't break any glass. This, I think, is actually designed to hold flowers, and it's gonna be what I'm using today. I just don't have enough mix to really fill up that bowl completely. And when I made this last year, I actually just did a mason jar, so it was a little smaller, but again, I liked having the handle, very transferable. There is going to be a lot of ingredients in this, so I will put it in the box below so that you can do it at home. First things first, we're going to need some hard candy, preferably berry or sour. You could go with nerds. I like just to use Skittles because I find them tasty. And you're going to line the bottom of your bowl with them. So you're thinking, what is that? Well, that's just the rocks. That's kind of your beach sand at the bottom. Next thing we're going to do is actually start layering in ice. So have your bucket of ice. And this calls for a lot of ice, so you're going to need an entire bucket. So there's our first layer. From here, what we're going to do is start designing our beach. I've got some candy here. First of all, I have some Swedish berries. I like to use these because they look like jellyfish. So we're going to start filling up our ocean with just a few jellyfish. Then we're going to add some gummy sharks. Now, I bought a mixed bag of gummies that was supposed to have different fish in it, and for some reason, I only got these sharks. So just layer them in on the ice, however you want it to look, really. Then we're going to add more ice. As I said, build it in layers, kind of like you're making a lasagna or a ziti. That way, this thing is going to be cold all day because the amount of alcohol in it you're gonna be sipping this thing. It's not something you want to down quickly. Okay, so I have my ocean built. The only other thing I'm gonna add, you can add this now, is I've sliced a piece of orange. You can use lemon, lime, whatever you want. This is just our sun because you're not going to the beach on a nasty day. So you're actually just gonna stick that more towards the back and we'll get our spoon from our helper, Rob. He's gonna be joining us in a lot more cocktail videos these days. Just jam that down in behind. So here's our ocean, we've got our ice, we've got all of our sea life in there, our sun. Let's start adding in that alcohol. Now, grab a martini shaker, which at the start of the video I actually forgot because there's so many components to making a fish bowl, but I absolutely love the flavor when this is all done. Um, I'm just going to put a little ice in my shaker, and the alcohol can actually go in in no particular order. So, first thing, a little blue curico. There's my jigger. I usually just do one ounce for each, one part to one part. Obviously, if you're making these for a bunch of people, you're going to want to go a little heavier. Next, coconut rum. It's the summer, so we really want to make sure we laden it with those fruity citrus and coconut flavors. Add that. Now, you can use just a regular vodka, but I've got some citrus vodka here I've been dying to try, and I think it would really add to the flavor of this drink. One ounce of that. There we go. Making sure that I don't mix up my alcohol and accidentally double up something. And a little bit of peach schnapps is always nice on a hot summer day. And we'll... You may have noticed I still haven't built a bar, but I borrowed a table from my sister for Christmas and still haven't given it back, so I think we'll be investing in one of these. Now, if you have some blue raspberry vodka, you can add this to the drink. I actually use this syrup just because I want my drink a little bit sweeter. So, just gonna add that in there. Now, as I said, this is a lot of alcohol. If you wanted to make this non-alcoholic, you could still use this syrup. You could use a little 7-Up. You could even use some blue Powerade or Gatorade or sports drink, even some Kool-Aid, or just some water and Mio and make it fun for the kids. So, just checking. Yes, we've added everything up. Just give it a little shake. There, we've got a nice Dr. Manhattan blue. We're going to dump that in. You can even throw some of the ice in there with it. It never hurts. And finally, we're going to take some Sprite or 7-Up or any type of soda water that you'd like to add. Yeah. Dump that in. 
As you can see, everything is mixing together, but it's still making us a nice ocean blue. And once things settle, it's going to be beautiful. If the blue is sitting at the bottom, just because you've used so much ice, just grab yourself a drink spoon, stir it up. And as that ice starts to melt, you'll start to see your see that starting to mix you can see that we have the ocean at the bottom the rocks a little bit of the animals actually sunk um, I find when I do this in the mason jar the jellies tend to stick a little bit now it's not summer without of course parasol umbrella finally got some at Michael's so plunk that in there add a colorful straw or two just so you can have someone join you because this is a very stiff drink and there you have it that is our tropical mason jar Oh, sorry, our tropical fishbowl. Now, there are a lot of beach-related video games out there. We could play something like Jaws, sure, or we could play something fun, and that's what we're going to do. So, what game are we going to choose? Well, I've decided we are going to play Disney's adaptation by Capcom of The Little Mermaid. It's a great game that I played a lot as a kid, so let's take a look at it. You may have noticed that the drink wasn't exactly ocean blue. I think that had to do with the candies I used. So here's a picture of last time I made one of these in the mason jar, and you can see how clear the drink actually was. So, you know what? It really didn't matter. The drink tasted delicious, especially when you pair it with a great game like The Little Mermaid. Now, let's be honest. Most movie adaptations of video games don't have a great track record on the Nintendo. Back to the Future comes to mind. Jaws, it seems like these games are just slapped together. Well, that's not the case with The Little Mermaid. It is a Capcom quality game. In terms of plot, I'm not really sure where this falls in the timeline. It seems like Ursula is still alive, Ariel is married to Eric, or at least they're together, so it could either be in the middle of the movie, it could be after and Ursula survived, but it doesn't matter. It seems like they just decided to make an entirely new story. In the game you play as Ariel, Ursula has decided to place a curse on the sea and changing all of the underwater creatures into villains and it's up to Ariel to save them. So she decides to jump back in the water and turn into a mermaid which is a power she apparently has that I was not aware of. So I think that was a good choice. Have the game play entirely underwater. Don't make any of it on land. Let's get back into the ocean. The gameplay is very simplistic and it's definitely aiming at a younger audience probably fans of the movies, anywhere from six to eight years old. And But you know what? The simplistic gameplay still made it really enjoyable to play, even as an adult. There are six levels. The first one is the coral level, and it's just a matter of getting used to the game. You have a standard mode of attack where you swing your tail, and you can shoot some sort of power out of the tail that turns your enemies into bubbles that you can then use to throw at other enemies. At the start of the game, it is very weak with limited range. By finding these seashells, you can actually unlock power-ups. The green orbs actually increase the range of your attack, while the red orbs change it to a more powerful attack, which allows you to attack larger enemies that you cannot with the starter weapon. However, be mindful, when you power up, your range goes back to zero, so you have to build back up. Now, I did like some of the throwbacks to the movie in this game. So if you actually see these little crevices, this is where you're going to want to throw your enemies because there's hidden items such as health, and you can even find a dingle hopper or a snorflat. For you uncultured folks, that's just a fork and a pipe. The game levels are pretty linear in nature. There's not really a lot of exploring. There are some secret caverns that you can find, but if you're a good player, you're really not going to need to keep getting these chests because you're going to have the max power pretty early on in the game. Bosses are pretty straightforward. It's just a matter of using your tail, capturing an enemy, and hitting them. There's no patterns or anything overly difficult, which is really nice to see in a game aimed at children. The only one that was a little hard was when you get to the ice level where you have to take these shells and actually jump out of the water and hit the walrus in behind. It takes about 30 minutes to get through this game, which is really short, but again, if you're a kid, it probably took you a lot longer. Finally, you face off with Ursula, and this is where you can tell it's a Capcom game because it feels very Mega Man-ish. The large enemy sits above you and you just throw items at it while it blasts you from all sorts of directions. And just when you think you've defeated Ursula, well, look out. Super Ursula is back, and even the music feels a little bit like something from Mega Man. Just take a listen. Now you've defeated Ursula, but you are still stuck underwater as a mermaid. Apparently Ariel does not have the powers to turn herself back into human. Luckily her father, King Trident, comes along and saves the day, and like every Disney story, it ends happily ever after. 
I can definitely recommend this game to anybody. If you're looking to get your kids into gaming, I know there's still a lot of young fans who love The Little Mermaid, and this is a great start. They did an excellent job with this. They captured the magic of the movie, they captured the fun of games like Mega Man by Capcom, and it's just a really great game. Thanks again for joining me here at H of X Gaming Memories for cocktails and game pairing. If you've got a drink that you want me to pair with a game, or a game that you want me to pair with a drink, please put it in the comments, email me at hfxgamingmemories at gmail.com, or hit me up on Twitter at hfxgamingmemory. Please share, subscribe, tell your friends, bring everybody in. I want to make this your channel, not just mine. I love hearing from the audience and viewers, and I'm looking forward to really having this channel grow and to turn into something that we can all enjoy. So don't forget, game and drink responsibly. I'll see you next time.